All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave here talking real music in real time for real people just like you and just like me. So uh, two videos back to back, one about Jason Chef, the next video about the band Chicago. I got to tell you, uh, Chicago has dropped another really awesome song. And I'm just going to tell it like it is. If I think it's good, I'm going to tell you it's good. I've had my issues with this band and their constant personnel changes. Keep in mind, I think this was recorded when Lou Pardini was still with Chicago based on the notes here. The new song is called Firecracker and uh, it is amazing. When I first heard the song, I thought of like Chicago 10. I mean, these guys have um, made a definite move to sound like they did maybe right after Terry Kath was doing all of the guitar fireworks. There was a period of time where the guitar was more subtle, wasn't in your face as much. And that was a very productive time for the band as far as getting onto radio stations and, you know, dominating the top 40 for most of the 70s. I mean, I'm thinking Chicago 10. Uh, Firecracker has a great vibe to it. It's jazzy. It's funky. Uh, Neil Donnell, again, got to tell you, sounds really good on this track. And uh, he's got help from people in the band. But for the most part, this is Neil Donnell, who I think almost sounds better in the studio. And, and maybe I'm just not hearing him right on the road when he's singing live. And of course I'm getting, you know, the cell phone videos uh, via YouTube. And as much again, as I like all the other singers with this group, Jeff Coffey and Jason Chef, and obviously Peter Cetera, who nobody can really, nobody wants to admit it, but nobody can really replace Peter Cetera. But uh, Neil Donnell is kind of in that seventies groove where Occasionally, you'd have a different guy singing for Chicago, and I may have this wrong, but every so often, maybe a guy like Donnie Dacus would sing, and the band would still keep its identity. I think that's where Chicago is right now. Um, the horns, very omnipresent. The production, where you can hear everything very clear, very crisp. Um, Jim Peterick, I think, is behind this, even though I'm not seeing any production credits uh, on the tracks as of yet. And if you missed the first single they came out with, which I thought was really impressive, it's called If This Is Goodbye. And it almost sounds like, hey, this is our last stand as a recording band. I don't know. I, I think people might be reading a little bit too much into that. And you know what? This is going to give Chicago a little shot in the arm because of all of the personnel changes in this group. Uh, you never know who's going to be where uh, when it comes to, you know, this band, um, meaning more or less, you never know who's going to be in the lineup. But I think this project is really good. It also is, I think, an indication to that Chicago, the current lineup, has really no love for their 80s time period. They certainly perform it when they're out on the road. They do the obligatory songs that they need to do. But I think if you were to give everybody in the band a dose of sodium pentothal, they would come forward and say, you know what? We want to play like the Chicago Greatest Hits album from the 70s. That's what we want to do. And maybe some deeper album cuts here and there. Um, and a couple of new songs that we've got out there. And that would be our set. Uh, a lot of fans go to these concerts thinking they're going to hear the entire Chicago 80s uh, catalog. And that's not the case. We've got Jason Chef out on the road singing What Kind of Man Would I Be, which, again, I haven't heard that in a Chicago set in a very long time. And it's good to hear that. But it's also, I guess, good that these guys are getting back to what they really want to do. There are 
real hardcore Chicago fans out there who don't recognize that period in the 80s where they became uh, more arena rock, more corporate rock, and you don't have Bill Champlin and you don't have Jason Sheff in the band anymore. So that really erases a good portion of that period where the band was still going strong and still putting out great music, but you've got nobody there who can accurately represent what was happening in the band at that time. Whereas Danelle seems to fit the 70s blueprint. And obviously Robert Lamb, that's his wheelhouse. The horn players, that's where they were in uh, full force. And there are no shortage of horns on this new song called Firecracker. Honestly, again, this is really hard not to like. Now you might say, well, there's no real screaming lead guitar in this song. I don't think it would fit in the song. So I think it was a good choice to keep the guitars more subdued. And again, these guys are highlighting their players, their current lineup, I think. And uh, kudos to Neil Donnell. You know, I'm just trying to be fair and balanced um, like an old network used to be and <laughs> say, look, this is really good. So I would check out Firecracker. I would check out their other song um, because both tunes are really good and you have to just be honest about it. When it's good, it's good. And, and this really makes me want to hear the rest of this record. The first single, If This Is Goodbye, the second single, Firecracker. I'm not sure of a release date on this. Um, it says that the tracks are provided by BMG Rights Management. So certainly this might get a little push toward those terrestrial radio stations. I don't know who, who's going to play Chicago, though. Who's going to play New Chicago? They should. Both of these songs would liven up any radio format. And again, if you're an indie radio guy, you've got your internet radio station, um, this is the kind of stuff I'd be adding all day long. I would be playing this. This would get right into rotation. This is a, a, a great song, an instant classic. And you know, if you're a fan of Chicago, especially the older school Chicago, which I like both eras. I like the 80s and uh, I like even at the beginning, the late 60s, where they started, that's really where they ended up getting their Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nomination and then induction uh, because of that material, which was so groundbreaking. But you know what? That breezy sort of West Coast 70s stuff, this fits right in. So if you're kind of a West Coast 70s guy, uh, you're going to love Firecracker. All right, that's my video. Again, looking for subscribers. If you'd like to subscribe, please do. Also, don't forget Patreon. I'm only asking for a dollar a month. This keeps the channel going. Uh, during the summer months, people tend to do other things. They have other plans, and uh, maybe they're not watching the videos as much anymore, and I get that. But if you can do a dollar a month, that would be great. It helps the channel, and uh, it will help me continue this channel. Thanks again, and uh, I will see you soon.